This is a production of Cornell University. Hi, everyone. Why don't we get started? Um, I'm Howard Rask, and I'm the head of Outreach, Access, and Public Computing here at Mann Library. And before I introduce our speaker, Buzz, I want to thank you for coming today, and thank you for coming to our beautifully renovated new Mann Library, and in particular, the Mann Library Gallery. We're really excited about the potential for this gallery to create a sense of community and to play a role in communicating science through art. Um, the gallery will provide a venue for um, student course-related projects from the Colleges of Agriculture and Human Ecology, in addition to showcasing other works of art and science as well. I did want to say a couple of things. We have a full schedule of events this semester, so I'll give the gallery a little bit of a plug and tell you about the next two shows that are coming up. The next one is an exhibit presented by Cornell Landscape Architecture graduate students. It's of cross-disciplinary work that will explore the issue of the availability of clean water on our planet as addressed in creative urban design. And then a show in November by local artist Jay Hart that illuminates the diversity, scale, and character of selected regions of the earth. And that exhibit will overlap with the library's GIS Day activities. Um, I just wanted to finish by saying I'm, I'm delighted that this opening exhibition features artist Jenny Whiteman. And I'm equally delighted that artist and professor Buzz Spector will be our first speaker. Buzz. Thank you, Howard. It is a gorgeous new space, this gallery in Mann Library. I'm looking forward to seeing how its program develops over time. It's great to be here on Jenny's behalf as well. At a university like Cornell, uh, even in a department as committed to material practices as art, uh, we often find uh, great intellects and sensibilities quite different from the expectations you usually bring to the practice of teaching art. Uh, I've got the pleasure, I've gotten the pleasure of, of teaching uh, artists who were uh, dual degree majors also uh, studying paleontology, physics, economics, industrial and labor relations, various of the uh, humanities. And uh, uh, to me that was a great uh, uh, selling point in convincing me to come to Cornell. Uh, one student I have not had is Jennifer Whiteman, although if I had to pick a paradigm for my expectations of a Cornell artist, Jenny would fill that bill. Technically, she is a consultant for carbon trading and biofuels with a background in science and technology studies. Uh, the way in which this equips her to be an artist, uh, though, is imponderable. Many of us who are involved in the sciences are capable of great and creative insights about the areas of meaning and value that we're engaged with. But not everybody can figure out how to concretize, materialize, give graphic, sculptural, painterly form to those thoughts. That's a different tactic of engaging knowledge. In my view, one of the most extreme artistic practices connecting scientific operations, facts of the world, if you will, with the aesthetic effect of art is Jenny's past work. I was first introduced uh, to her art by the artist who insisted that I come out to the uh, Cornell Plantations and take a look at an installation she had made out there. Occasionally, uh, non-artists show up in my office and want to show me their work, and often uh, the experience is pleasurable in a minor sort of way, like scratching an itch. I humored the girl and said, I'll come out there and take a look. After all, the plantations are beautiful in the early fall. Two hours later, I hated to leave the installation I'd seen with the exotic title of Surd, but which I think of as tree piece. That's a pun, by the way, because it had three elements. But those elements, the arrangement of tree stumps across the broad meadow in the plantation, 
the didactic material found here and there on unobtrusive placards, the enormous plexiglass wrapped stack of papers in the woods like a kind of totem, in fact were three ways of visualizing the, the per capita paper consumption of Cornell's community, the faculty, the students, and the staff. It is unnerving to see an eight foot high stack of papers and understand that by multiplying this mass by 28,000, you get how much paper Cornell consumes in a year. The only experience I, I could compare it to might be uh, the first time I saw Al Gore's Inconvenient Truth. Striking, didactic, polemical, but also materially gorgeous. These are characteristics of Jenny's subsequent work. My favorite among uh, the many projects I've, I've participated in or seen over the years uh, has to be the Winogradsky Rod Rothkos. Uh, if you take certain species of bacteria culture and uh, place them in rich growing environments, you'll get a very colorful splash of uh, communal uh, reproduction. But if the form of that environment are two sheets of glass held in place by a metal armature of the precise dimensions of a Rothko painting, you'll get bands of color that metamorphosize into what looks very much like a Rothko painting with the bacteria as the public and simultaneously the subject of the work. Now, no one would confuse Jenny's Winogradsky Rothkos with an actual Rothko, but it has something very much in common with the painter. These sheets of glass, this bacterial action, the exquisite care with which the armatures were constructed and mounted, they are art as well. And the chance operations of the bacteria bring something very broad and expansive, embracing of the world into the work in a manner that even so spiritual a practitioner as Rothko himself would have admired. Jenny likes soap boxes. She has strong beliefs. She's willing to share them. This is a generosity we appreciate in Ithaca. Her current project, the International Soapbox Project, as its tentative title, will involve travel by the artist to Istanbul, Helsinki, Cuchabamba, Bolivia, Nairobi, Kenya, many other cities, uh, planting, shall we say, metaphorical soapboxes in place for people to give vent to such protests, such manifestos of the political circumstances as each of those various environments will permit, all scrupulously recorded and transmitted back to Ithaca by the artist, who will then subsequently work with this material to give a new uh, armature, a new conceptual armature to this work. When I was an undergraduate uh, in the 1960s at Southern Illinois University, I had the good fortune to uh, work uh, as an intern for Buckminster Fuller, the inventor, designer, dancer, philosopher, uh, really great Renaissance man of the 20th century. And, uh, Passing through the installation just now, I saw a rocking chair that reminded me very much of Fuller. As his intern, Bucky, who was not averse to uh, uh, looking good on camera, asked me to get him a rocking chair so that it could be filmed for a public uh, presentation, uh, reclining underneath a great pine tree on the SIU campus. And I drove all over Southern Illinois in my little flower power Volkswagen. Uh, looking for rocking chairs until I found a gorgeous Bentwood rocker, the morning of the talk, and drove it back to campus in an exhilaration of uh, finding. Set it on the ground, we mic'd up Bucky, he sat down in it and rocked back. It's not as bad as, it, as you think. <laughs> the problem was that it, it creaked, and the mics would pick up the creaking. And applications of... Uh, of uh, ST40, didn't do the trick. Ultimately, we filmed Bucky standing up underneath that tree, and afterwards, 
He came to me and he said, what do I teach you? I teach you comprehensive anticipatory design science. The idea is to plan ahead, to think about all the variables that you could find there. You're such an artist, Buzz. <laughs> you picked a rocking chair that looked good. Did you ever put your butt in it? <laughs> it instructed me for my subsequent teaching in ways I hadn't previously imagined. So having shared my shame with you, I can say that the free association I draw from Jenny's work is typical of the kinds of thinking she invites her public to engage in. Not to fetishize science as an artifact of equations and graphs, but to materialize the inspiration of science in the way that only artists can by providing through the tenderness of working with materials, the taste and judgment of the selection of elements, the application of scale, distance, form, and color. Oh, and light. She enlightens an audience to think about the facts of the world and the ideas that enrich it in new ways. I welcome you to go through the installation. It is definitely a hands-on affair. And uh, save the buffet until after you've had a chance to play with the work. Thank you. <laughs>